Well, my issue with candidates receiving a lot of money with PACs is that the individual voter, that maybe their vote doesn't count to a candidate quite as much as the group that donated X amount of dollars. So you're saying maybe the candidate's allegiance is to the group it's instead to the of the group. individual voter. Like, for instance, your opponent, Renee Elmer, she's outraged you on individual donations from people like me, Sandra, uh, an individual. You've outraised her on donations by 725000 on PAC donations, where she's only that, raised well, 13000 Well, that's 000. not true either. You're wrong. You're only including a limited period of time. Well, if you, uh, right. you, well wait a minute. Okay. Now, wait a minute. If you use selective data, you're correct. If you use total data, I've outraised her by, from individuals substantially. More people individually have contributed to my campaign. And secondly, and more importantly, PACs are political action committees, people, right, and individuals. And when I file my report, we know who they are. How about that 800,000 they pledged to run against me, almost 400,000 they put in by ads from people we don't know who they are. It could be from drug agents. Like Americans for yeah. Job Security? Who are they? Right. Who that, are they? That was my question because another question. Well, they, who are they? They spent $360,000 on ads against you. Why? Who are they? I have no idea. Where are they from? They could be from international companies because we put, I voted and supported legislation against corporations shipping jobs, getting credits to ship jobs overseas to keep them here at home. It could be, you know, the problem I have with these groups is number one, they don't have to tell who they are. Mm -hmm. We don't know who they are. Uh, we know two of them are billionaires who are mad about some of the credits we took away from some of the oil businesses they're mm -hmm. doing when they're shipping stuff and penalizing Americans. I, you know, as much as the whole issue of funds in politics is an issue, but we tried to pass legislation this year that said we couldn't stop them from putting the money in because right. the Supreme Court, by a five to four decision, right along political lines, right. said they can do it. So we passed legislation through the House that said two things. Number one, if you're going to do it, you got to tell us who you are. You know, mm -hmm. what groups are mm -hmm. contributing to these organizations, organizations right. whomever they are. And secondly, you can only, you can't do it and target one individual. You got to do it in a generic way where it's already done. It passed the House right along party lines. Democrats voted for it. Republicans voted against it. It got to the Senate and Senator McConnell and the Republicans filibustered and wouldn't let it come up. Now for them to say, to argue against transparency and openness, that's hypocritical because they want to keep it in hiding. So who are these folks? I don't know. I think the American people have a right to know because let me tell you the danger of this. The real danger of it over the long haul is who is trying to buy political influence. Right. And I think that's dangerous. Right. I do too. I mean, I think Absolutely. that's dangerous. It gutted every campaign finance law going all the way back to Teddy Roosevelt in 1903. And Teddy Roosevelt was not a flaming liberal. He was a populist. Mm -hmm. He was a Republican president. And he got the law put on the books that said when he was doing trust busting against Standard Oil, the big insurance companies and monopolies during the day, he said American politics should not be for sale. We shouldn't be selling political mm -hmm. fishing. We ought to know who's putting the money in. And in the case of mine, you can look at it and tell who they are because their names, addresses, and we list, if anyone contributes money, we know who it is. They give five dollars, their name gets put on a list. Mm -hmm. We don't put them in in a non-contributed way, putting their names down. Right. I think it's important uh, for, for the American people to know. But that's a great let's, question. Let's talk real quick about fair tax. You're running an ad against your opponent about the 23 percent fair tax. I think the public is kind of ignorant on this from the questions I've gotten and the comments I've gotten. Congressman, help us out a little bit. You're opposed to fair tax. Yes. I think the system ought to be fair. I really believe, I think our current system needs adjustment and fixing because I think... Good, I'm glad to hear that. Because it, it really does, there are too many loopholes in the uh -huh. current system. And uh -huh. we tried to close one by closing the loophole on the shipping jobs offshore, we did that. 
but on what's called a fair tax or sale, it's really nothing more than a sales tax. And the minimum is 23%. Some say it's a whole lot more than that. But that means you're paying on every single dollar you buy and every transaction. Mm -hmm. For an example, if I went and had my, had my car repaired yesterday, had a bad wheel bearing in it, didn't have time to fix it myself, had to have it paid, I would have had to pay 23% on that. Mm -hmm. Now, a better one would probably be food. You go buy food, you pay 23%. Okay, right. You go see your doctor, you go see your dentist. I mean, those things add up. If you're a person that makes, let's assume it's 20000 a year, you're going to pay it on everything you spend on that. If you're making twenty. Chances are you're going to spend all that money because you don't have a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, if you're making your adjusted gross income, and that means if I'm a farmer and I may make my business may have bring in two million, right. but by the time I take the expenses off, I've got two hundred thousand. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, on that two hundred thousand, I'm probably better shape. But let's take a person who did it and wound up at two million. If you got two million adjusted gross income. Chances are you aren't going to be spending anywhere near as much as this person making twenty thousand. That person making twenty thousand is going to pay taxes on every single dollar they have. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have a whole lot less money to buy groceries, to buy food, to buy a car. They'll never hope to own a home mm -hmm. on that. The beauty of America, the greatness of America, is that we've been able to build a middle class. And I'm right. an example. Of that. I can't. My, I grew up in Johnston County. My dad was a tenant farmer. He didn't own the house we lived in nor the land we farmed. And neither he nor my mother had a high school education, but they wanted us to get a good education. Mm -hmm. So education tied with a little luck and a lot of hard work, mm -hmm. you get a chance to be a part of the middle class. Now, we now say if you buy a home, that's deductible on your taxes. In this situation, you're going to make taxes mm -hmm. on all those dollars. You're on, on that's those going to mean. Well. That's going to mean that you're going to have a very difficult time ever owning a home. Mm -hmm. The fair tax takes away the income. The, the takes away all those takes deductions. Away, takes away the income tax, but you only pay the 23%. And so, so for the people under $200,000 a year, you pick up, and that means for the top 20%, you get a huge tax cut, and for the bottom 80%, you get a huge tax increase. And that means if you're trying to get in the middle class, you're going to have a hard time staying there and the chances of getting there aren't going to get there. And if you look at the countries that have done this kind of thing, you've got two levels, the wealthy and the rest of us. Well, I know that and my that's just congressman not uh, for my area is Walter B. Jones, and I know he's opposed to it as well. So. Well, he understands that. I think, I think when you sit down and put a pencil on it, what a public policy ought to be about the public good. It ought not to be about enriching a few people. Mm -hmm. Now, mistakes can be made along the way, but it ought not to be the public policy that we're going to do it because we build roads. And last time I checked, the state doesn't have road builders. We you know, contract mm -hmm. with the private sector to build the roads. Mm -hmm. Now, we can get into issues sometime down the road when people may collude to do bad things, but the long and short of it is we build roads for the public good. Mm -hmm. Water systems. I remember growing up and we had a well. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of rural areas now have water systems. Mm -hmm. I have a well. I don't have water. Yeah, but there. I mean, I have a well. But yeah. fewer and fewer people have wells mm -hmm. simply because, and some of it's a convenience. If you've got one, you know, you don't have to pay a water mm -hmm. bill, but you right. got to pay a power bill. But as long as water tastes I'm, better the, too. The, yeah, <laughs> but but you've got you know the dentists now recognize with mm -hmm. with the water, you put chlorine in, you help with the mm -hmm. teeth, you done right. problems. But as long as you, a lot of these things are put together for the public good. And that's really what we ought to be about in public service and not enriching a few. And, and that's why tax policy is so, uh, is so important that we really know what we're doing when we make major shifts. Talking about the middle class, right here in our area, right here in Nash and Edgecombe County, we have hundreds, thousands of people without jobs. Unemployed. We have, if you walk downstairs when you leave here, there's a temporary agency and every morning when you come in, mm -hmm. there is a line of people looking for jobs. What can you do to help the people? And you know, somebody said, well, you know, when, when you get to Washington, it's, it's about this and that. When you get to Washington, is it about the people in your district and is it about creating jobs for the people in your district? And how are you gonna help these people? Because unemployment is running out, 
uh, you know, and people don't qualify for other federal assistance. People are struggling in this area. Yeah. Well, it's true. We, you know, this this situation started a number of years ago. Over the last nine, ten months now, we've created more private sector jobs than we did in the last four years, eight years, really, private sector jobs. Uh, but we lost so many jobs right at the end of the Bush administration's the economy just started to tanking. Mm -hmm. Lost almost eight million jobs. Uh, I sponsored and it became law the Hire Act in January of this year, where if you're a private sector person, hire someone who's been unemployed for two months, you get a tax credit immediately on your balance sheet mm -hmm. when you file your taxes. And that's helped. That's not nearly enough of what we need to do. The other thing we've done is last year we passed a, a bill that I'd been working on for 12 years, really, a school construction bill, zero interest bonds, building schools. Matter of fact, and I was in Middlesex the other day where we were building mm -hmm. a new elementary school. Mm -hmm. Every one of those jobs are private sector jobs. That does several things. It puts people to work. Teachers have a good place to teach. Children have a place mm -hmm. to learn. It'll be there a long time. I really think that some of the things that we need to do in the public sector, I think it's good policy to provide resources for water, sewer, and roads. Our infrastructure needs to be upgraded. When you do that, what you do is you put private sector people to work, and you build an infrastructure that will be good for 30, 40, 50 years because it's aging. Uh, and we have to continue to move forward on creative tax policy. The federal government, and really the state government either, other than providing funds for teachers, law enforcement, first responders, people who are in the public sector, which we have done and really need to continue to do. We did that last year to keep us from laying teachers off. Mm -hmm. uh, those are public sector things we need to do. But the other things is to provide the tax incentives to help private sector grow. And you say, well, why haven't you already done it? And we've tried, we've worked some of that. And some of that is starting to turn, but it, it's just so slow because we have to move. And I think the thing we've got to do is we started with the Higher Act. We closed some of the tax loopholes for shipping jobs overseas. I think it's going to be <clears throat> more things have to be done to create an environment so that we can have products that stay on the, the shirts. Made in the USA. You got that right. Well, I say the only made thing. Made in America. The only thing that's made in America is babies right now. That's well, it. Well, we're making a few more than you, that. I mean,